Um, how do you handle the experience of jealousy? So let's call this segment four must know tips for jealousy and insecure attachment. And so if your heart is on the mend and you happen to see your ex smiling and happy with a new partner, and maybe it's only weeks after you broke up, then this is a segment you're gonna wanna watch, right? Or if you are flying high on the romance and you think that everything is going your way and then you stumble upon a text notification from your partner's ex and there's kissy face emojis and a flirty back and forth, <laughs> then this might be the video segment for you too. Or maybe you're just sick and tired of every lovesick couple in the world somehow managing to find their way into your line of sight at restaurants, on public transit, at work, at friends' dinner parties. They're pawing at each other and they're mauling their faces off and you have not had a decent date in months then this might be a segment for you as well. Because I wanna talk about these tips on how you can handle and reconceptualize jealousy when you feel like you may have an insecure attachment style, okay? So we're gonna talk about the difference between jealousy and envy, how to recognize jealousy as a growth opportunity, how to recognize how jealousy can actually improve your relationship and also recognize how jealousy can deepen your spiritual practices. Okay, so the goal here is after this segment, you're going to be able to turn that green eyed monster into an ally that allows you to expand into an increasingly conscious relationship. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Brianna McWilliam and I am a licensed and board certified creative arts therapist, author and educator with more than 15 years in the field, helping adults struggling with insecure attachment go from self doubting to self sovereign so they can attract those soul shaking passionate partnerships that they want. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing a clip of a live stream event that took place inside my private Facebook groups, which people can access once they've purchased one of my online courses. If you're interested in finding out if you might have insecure attachment, check out the link in the caption of this video. You'll be able to take an easy four question quiz and find out your attachment style, plus a detailed explanation. Now, if you like what you see in here and you haven't yet, make sure that you like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. I put up videos once or twice a week, and sometimes I will do occasional live streams through my YouTube channel, and I wouldn't want you to miss out. So the first thing I want to say when it comes to jealousy is the first tip, and that is to know the difference between jealousy and envy. Now, oftentimes they can go hand in hand together, but there are some nuances and if you can tap into those nuances, you can, it can help you understand how jealousy could be a growth opportunity. So jealousy is when we wanna keep what we have. It's a defense against loss, basically. Now, envy is when we want what we don't have. And you can feel these things at the same time, especially if your loss is somebody else's gain. But in either case, we tend to feel powerless to exert our influence in some way. And so more importantly, jealousy and envy can reflect a feeling or a lack of something that is intensely wanted or needed. So if you want to shift your energy around emotions like this, you want to figure out what it is that you think you are lacking or needing or in danger of losing, and then determine if the feeling itself is envy or jealousy or both. And so once you acknowledge the root source of that sense of threat, then you can shift your focus to a state of appreciation and abundance, okay? So you wanna brainstorm the ways in which you can commit to generating more of that appreciation, um, practically speaking. And that is by recognizing that jealousy and envy are actually telling you exactly what you need. And how do you do this? Well, I recommend you do this by establishing what I call seven, the seven commitments. And these are statements of external desire that you basically commit to fulfilling for yourself. So for example, the first commitment would be something like, you recognize what you're looking for and wanting in the external world. So I want a partner that inspires feelings like what? And the only way that I can, the one way that I can stimulate this feeling for myself is to, and insert a very practical thing, right? So we have a tendency to think that the only way I can stimulate these feelings for myself is if a partner is doing it for me or if I have a partner in my sphere. But this is a practice of challenging you to extract the essence of the need and the desire from the focus of that, which in this case would be your partner, and then to realize that you can generate that feeling in other ways, practical ways that are within your control. So the second tip is to realize that jealousy um, is also a defensive coping strategy, usually for something that is a lot more deep-seated within you. 
So jealousy can also be a displacement of a sense of threat. And you may be directing your jealousy towards a third party instead of an offending partner because you think that keeps you safe from the threat of losing your partner. On the other hand, jealousy can turn into distaste and it can cause you to reject that which you are afraid of losing altogether because that would eliminate the anxiety of anticipating a loss so that you can stop waiting for the other shoe to drop. So for example, and this ties into attachment styles. So for example, jealousy can be experienced and interpreted in very different ways depending on your attachment style. So a member of my online community once said, I feel like avoidant partners have a big ego in that they dislike admitting that they're jealous. They'll say, I dislike when, instead of just saying, that makes me jealous. Now, first of all, anytime you phrase something like, that makes me anything, you tend to hand over your responsibility of your feelings. So using an expression like, I feel or I think, even a I dislike statement is actually a sign that that person is owning their experience. So that's a good thing, okay? Additionally, sometimes if someone who's more avoidant feels jealous, it might seem to them as if it is an induced feeling. So it's as if their partner was trying to induce jealousy so as to get a rise out of them because they are searching for evidence of feeling because they themselves are wanting more closeness and connection. So sometimes for the anxious partner, they experience jealousy quite often just as a result of the nature of their insecurity. And if they see their partner experiencing jealousy too, they might take it as proof positive of reciprocated feelings. So the jealousy makes them feel closer to their partner. It makes them feel connected. It makes it feel like they are more like them, right? Through sameness, connection through sameness. And so they want their partner to admit those jealous feelings because they feel that is a bridge to connection, to being closer. It is evidence of love, okay? But their partner does not have that reaction to the experience of jealousy. To them, the jealousy is distasteful. It feels like weakness. It feels like a power play and or they feel like they're being manipulated, even if they are not. So then they start to feel revulsion towards the love object itself out of a desire not to be controlled by their feelings for the love object. So then the love object starts to seem like the cause of the discomfort. And so the avoidant partner starts to distance themselves from their lover. So it's not that the avoidant partner isn't admitting jealousy, but rather that the jealousy means something very different to them than it might to their anxious partner specifically. And so it compels them differently. It does not foster connection for them or make them realize the intensity of their feelings such that they would want to move closer. On the contrary, it's more likely to feel distasteful and to inspire them to reject their lover and see them as the source of the discomfort. So that's an important distinction if you're thinking about the role of jealousy. Now, the third tip is to recognize that jealousy can help you deepen your relationship if you can approach it in a certain way. So if we can be honest about our feelings of jealousy, then we can be tipped off to the fact that we are needing to establish a deeper and more secure connection with our partner and make conscious efforts to express those needs authentically and honestly rather than defensively or in provocative ways that create more conflict because we are afraid of showing our vulnerability. So this is, a, this is also an opportunity to establish a deeper connection to your own needs and feelings and desires and to practice emotionally honest communication, right? And that leads me to the fourth step, which is to recognize that jealousy can show us how to deepen our spiritual practices. I would argue this is how we gain access to our more honest needs. So everybody feels jealousy or envy at some point, and it's okay to have those emotions. In fact, if we have a tendency to avoid feeling too much or to ignore our emotional health and well-being, then jealousy can really be a powerful reminder that this is a part of you that needs a little TLC as well. And so jealousy could be a signpost, just like any other emotion. And giving yourself permission to have those feelings in a safe way and in a safe place, right? And then you can take a closer look at what are the painful beliefs that may be fueling that emotion. So oftentimes they're connected to feelings of low self-esteem, not being good enough, 
um, feelings of shame or fears of failure or feeling discredited or disrespected or undervalued in some way. Jealousy can also evolve from comparisonitis, right? When we compare the worst of what we know about ourselves with the best of what we perceive in someone else. And that's a habit that often supports automatic negative thinking um, or a harsh internal critic. And that is going to restrict your authentic expression. That's going to make it hard to be vulnerable and to open up and be honest about how you're feeling, right? And your ability to live with a deeper sense of spiritual meaning and purpose. So, so when you are able to recognize that that's what's going on, that means you have a place where you can dig in deeper. And that will, once you dig into that, you can loosen the constraints around your expectations and your ability to expand into these new and widening corners of yourself. So number one, make sure you know the difference between jealousy and envy. Jealousy is about losing something you have. Envy is about wanting something you don't have but desperately need and want, okay? Tip two is to realize that jealousy is a defensive coping mechanism for something that is important and deep-seated. And the way you experience jealousy is going to differ based on your attachment style. So individuals that tend to have reaching for tendencies, which we might associate with anxious open hearts, they tend to view jealousy as a way to establish connection, whereas individuals that have a more rolling stone attachment style, what I refer to as individuals who have withdrawing tendencies, they experience it as distasteful and they will likely put distance between themselves and an attachment figure to quell the feeling, okay? The third tip is to recognize that jealousy can help deepen your relationship, and that is if you can turn that microscope in on yourself and recognize what need is the jealousy pointing towards. And that leads us to the fourth tip, which is to recognize when you access those needs, not only do you deepen the relationship, but you also have an opportunity for spiritual growth, because this is about expanding into your sense of self-sovereignty tackling any feelings of low self-esteem, not being good enough, feeling shameful about yourself, which go a lot deeper than necessarily the space between you and someone else. And once you're able to dig in that deeply, now the space between you and someone else can grow and expand and become much more collaborative and interdependent without stimulating the triggers that we might find from an, uh, within an insecure attachment style or the expression of an insecure attachment style.